Thanks for downloading the Racing Postcast. Listen online and on mobile. Hello and welcome to a special Royal Ascot Bloodstock Postcast from the Racing Post. I'm Martin Stevens, Bloodstock Editor, and I'm here with my colleagues on the Bloodstock Desk, James Thomas and Chris Hill. Um, we're going to be talking about Royal Ascot this week, giving you our best bets and looking at a possible first stakes winner for dual world champion Frankel. But first of all, um, for Bloodstock enthusiasts, the intrigue at Royal Ascot starts the day before the meeting with the Goffs London sale at Kensington Palace. And causing all the intrigue this year will be Jet Setting, the winner of the Irish 1000 Guineas, beat, of course, on that day, Minding, who went on to win the Oaks impressively last week. And we're going to play a very dangerous game of trying to put a valuation on her head and guess what she might make. So to do that, uh, we've all written down on a piece of paper what we think she might make, and we haven't discussed this, and we're going to open them now and see what we've all put. So, um, gents, if you're ready. Yep. Um, I've gone for 2.1 million. James has been mean and said 1 million. And Chris? 1.2 million. 1.2 million. So... Um, I suppose, shall we start at the lowest and you can make your case, James, and say why you think she's going to make only a million? Um, I mean, you say only a million. I feel like that's, you know, it's not an insignificant amount by any means. The one thing that I think holds her back is her pedigree. I am a believer in that pedigrees are made on the track and, you know, given that she's won a classic, she she could be the start of something really big for this family. Um, but as yet, there's a, a, a bit of a lack of black type on her page um, and I think that will deter people that are possibly looking to breed from her in the future. So going against that, you also have the fact she's by Fast Company, who prior to this season was slightly unheralded, but he's obviously a sire on the up. The fact that Dali have invested in him are going to be standing him at Kildang and stood next year is a massive point to the regard in which they hold him. Um, given the, the likes of John Ferguson have been active at this sale in the past, buying last year's top lot Majestic Queen for 825000 mm. I do wonder whether people like that are going to be looking at this mare and, you know, viewing her as a, a potential broodmare for the future whether people will be investing her purely as a broodmare or whether they'll be thinking of a racing upside the racing upside with her first you know I'm not entirely sure I have to say I think it's not necessarily true that she's not well bred um, I think fillies or any horse can make their own pedigree and of course when Jet Setting's younger siblings come out and race we'll say that those horses are well bred because they'll be a sibling yeah. to a classic winner and also um the first three dams are by Johannesburg, Pivotal and Learfan, all good size. They're not country stallions, you know, um, horses who only stood for speed. They're proper classic um, sires. Yeah. And um, I think the third dam was a Ribblesdale winner or something, wasn't it? The and fourth dam was Ribblesdale winner? Fourth dam. <laughs> Thank you, James. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 I don't necessarily agree with the fact that um, she's not well-bred, and I think fast company... I mean, I'm not saying she's not well-bred, it's more just that... She didn't have a, an entirely fashionable no, no, pedigree. No, it's not. It's not star studded, is it? No. Um, I, I think the other thing that will anchor her is her um, full purchase price of seven thousand euro, and um, of course, last year she was bought very astutely by John Kilbride for twelve thousand guineas um, towards the end of her two-year-old season. Um, perhaps buyers might won't want to exceed that too much, although of course they will. Chris, why have you gone for the middle figure? Well, I think. Agree with James that yeah, over a million. The sales sort of improving and it's going from strength to strength each year. I, I can't see it going at any more than certainly up to two million, just because I think she's going to be bought to breed from rather than racing as well. Personally, I'd, I'd say she may have fluked that one thousand guineas win on heavy ground. <laughs> controversial. Uh, That's very exactly. controversial. But minding minding comes out with a lot of credit. I'd say running out so close. They did pull, pull about ten lengths. They did, no, exactly. Um, she had her best conditions, and no full credit to her. And as you say, she's done amazingly well for connections and sitting watch. They paid for her initially. It's a, whatever they're going to make a significant amount of profit on that. I, I just think she could go to Dubai eventually. She could go to Galileo, so she'll have the two big operations on her. Well, you do have to wonder whether someone would buy her with the intention of covering her with something like Dubai, Galileo in the future, and then. Selling a infold, someone like that, and you know, making a fairly quick turnaround on that prop, you know, possibly that would be a, a high stakes game, wouldn't it? If it they would, were yeah. doing that, it's obviously a quite an unusual set of circumstances, isn't it? Having a classic winning mare, yeah, being sold at this stage of the year. I actually jotted down a few as a form guide a few previous um, prices of classic winners in recent years. So Shakita made six million, she of course won the um, Irish Oaks, that's six million euros. 
which is about 4.7 million sterling. Just the judge was 4.5 million, although she was retained um, partly by her owner, Qatar Racing. Um, Dancing Rain, the Oaks winner, made 4 million guineas. Tiggy Wiggy last year, um, Classic placed 2.1 million. Qualify the Oaks winner last year, who um, you probably say is also, um, with no disrespect, slightly fluky. It was um, probably her, by far her finest hour. She made 1.6 million. Um, I also think, I just wonder whether that occasion of the Goffs London sale, a nice sunny day um, out in London, um, with a few drinks down, and people might get um, carried away by the atmosphere. I think inflated prices do seem to be something of a hallmark of that sale, don't they? So, are you suggesting that Majestic Queen wasn't worth eight hundred? I'm not suggesting that at all. But you know, <laughs> um, yeah, as, but as you just said, Majestic Queen last year made eight hundred twenty-five thousand. She was a Group Three winning sprinter. And the year before, um, the very first Goffs London sale, Capella San Severo won, um, sold for 1.3 million. Um, of course, the next day he finished second in the um, Coventry Stakes, and he's now standing as a stallion. And um, Crystal Gaze, the mayor with her Frankel Colt Fold at foot, was sold for 1.15 million. Um, time will tell whether they turn out to be value purchases. So um, I also think she'll have Qatari potentially on her Japanese buyers. Um, and don't forget, there's a big school of thought out there, I think, among breeders who want um, high-performing fillies and um, who believe that um, ratings are the best indicator of um, future success as a broodmare. So I think she'll have people on her for that reason alone. So, um, yeah, two million for me, one million for James and somewhere in the middle for Chris. Yeah, lower, close to James, 1.2. Perfect. Want a right raw result for Royal Ascot? Join Racing Post Members Club for premium data and analysis that can help you find winners. And we're back now looking um, for Royal Ascot week. And um, I've asked the team to pick out a pedigree punt for the week. Um, Chris, why don't you go first? OK. It's a horse who's actually entered it in the Goss London sale. Um, I think it might be quite a late entry. It's called Calendar. And it's uh, trained by Patrick ben Prendergast. Uh, won its last start um, over five furlongs, but it sold at the Goss London sale with an entry in the commentary stakes. But I was thinking it might go for the Windsor Castle over five, because I would think five furlongs is better for him because uh, he's uh, out of a Group 2 uh, five furlong winner called Much Faster. She was uh, one of the pre-Robert Papa, um, and she's produced a listed winner over five furlongs as well called Sugar Free. That's by Oasis Dream. Uh, Calendo himself is by Exceed and Excel, who's got a really good record at um, Ascot. I think he's mm. had three winners, three Royal Ascot winners in the last six years. Can he, Buratino last year? Exactly, in the commentary, yeah. yeah. That qualifies it, but yeah, it's, it's always he got, got performers run well at Ascot. Um, but it's taken, it's taken that horse three starts to win, though, didn't it? So yeah, it's the third time. I think it was gradually form, improving, or? yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it would be if he wins a forest, um, sorry, wins a castle stakes, he's 33 to 1 at the moment for that. Um, Coventry is probably even a bigger price because, mm -hmm. in my opinion, that looks a cracking race with certainly three standout colts at the moment at heading the market. And would you venture a price for him at Gox on, on Monday? Um, calendar? You say Capella Sensevero went for 1.3. 1. 1. Um, yeah, but he had stakes for him, I think. Exactly. Really, so a little bit less than, I mean, like I say, 750,000. Yeah, okay. be a good payday for connections. Um, James, what's your pedigree punt? Um, I've gone for one at the sort of opposite end of the scale rather than fast and sort of two -year speedy two-year-old form. I've gone for um, Gershwin, who's trained by David Lanigan, who's a three-year-old son of Shamadal. Um, not 100% sure which race he'll be going for at the moment, whether it'll be the Tercentenary or the King Edward the Seventh. Um, but I just think he's a really progressive horse. He's out of a Monju mare, who was a listed winner over 12 furlongs. Um, Gershwin's latest win came of a 10 at Leicester, and I think he's the sort of horse who's just going to keep getting better the further they set him up in trip. Obviously, Shamadal's progeny progressed well. Got the stamina influence coming from the Monjou mare. Um, the mare's called Gridara, and she was a half-sister to the Group 1 winner Joffre and the dual-listed winner Big Baz. Um, and whilst he's got to make a fairly big jump from you know, a handicap, I think his official mark's 91 at the moment, up to stakes company, I think there's plenty in his pedigree to suggest that he can do that. Good, yep. So um, I have gone for Harry Angel as a bit of an outside 
punt for the um, Windsor Castle. Um, sorry, for the Norfolk Stakes. Um, I like the fact he finished uh, just that no second on his debut in quite a smart looking Ascot condition uh, novice stakes a few weeks ago, just beaten by Reach High. And I think they pulled two lengths clear of um, the previous winner. He's by Dark Angel, who um, produces a slew of really classy two year olds year after year, it seems. Um, and he's trained by Clive Cox. And you can see why Clive Cox paid £44,000 for Doncaster last year because he's out of a half sister to extension. Um, that good horse for Clive Cox and extension of course finished second to Canford Cliffs in the Coventry Stakes so there's um, a bit of Royal Ascot heritage there in the pedigree I know in that race James you like global applause though do you? Um, yeah I do I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Masons um, I think global applause is sort of leading the way for Mason at the moment um, he looks a really nice speedy two year old I think his best form is going to come over five furlongs um, Beat the Al Shakal horse, whose name now escapes Memas. Memas. Memas, Memas, yeah. Last time, I think that's you know some pretty strong form there, and yeah, a lot of the maidens I've seen look like they're going to make really speedy two-year-olds. So I wouldn't be surprised if you can sneak another winner somewhere during the meeting as well. It'd be quite something for the breeders of Global Applause, um, Robin and Scarlet Knight, uh, to get a five furlong winner at Royal Ascot because they um, also bred this year Thistlecrack, who obviously won over extended distances at Cheltenham. So um, they must win some sort of award for the most versatile breeders in Britain. Um, any other thoughts for Royal Ascot? Any other fancies, Chris? I'd say in, in the Norfolk, if Caravaggio turns up, again, he's in the commentary, one of the few making up the heading the betting there. Yeah. Um, but if he runs in the Norfolk, he's by Scat Daddy, and he's had two Royal Ascot winners from two runners, I think. And obviously, Acapulco last year, mm -hmm. and No No Never before that, so they're speedy, and he's been doing all his winning over five furlongs so far. Um, so again, that looks a decent race if Norfolk very competitive. So fair to say that we're looking forward to the Royal Ascot two-year-old races. Read the Racing Post newspaper for the hottest coverage of this summer's racing. Available from all good news agents on iPad and as a digital paper at racingpost.com. And finally, we're on the Saturday of Royal Ascot. This could be a real treat for pedigree enthusiasts. Um, the possibility of the legendary Frankel having his first stakes winner. Um, that could be Kunko. Apologies for the pronunciation if that's wrong. Um, in the Chesham Stakes. He was a comfortable winner at Newbury last time um, and that form had a huge compliment paid to it by the fourth that day, Barrington hacking up at Windsor next time and very ominously, Rab Havlin, who rode Kunko that day, said there were a few more gears left. So, team, a stakes winner at Royal Ascot for Frankel? I think definitely. I think definitely. can't see in the Chesham. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There aren't, obviously the markets aren't formed yet, really, because I think the entries close shortly. Um, but he has the mark in, and I think he's seven to one at the moment. So he won't be on the on the day if he turns up there because it was impressive performance. Um, say Rab Havlin found struggled to pull him up. That was over six. Um, it's got the style of Frankel as well. Sort of mm. Seeing him, it looks like him. I think all ground will will suit. Or we'll, we'll be able to form on all sorts of ground. It's good to soft at Newbury. Tends to go faster at um, Ascot, and I think that'll benefit him as well. Um, as you say, it was hard to pull up. Seven Burns will suit. Uh, John Gosling's won the race before with Richard Pankhurst mm -hmm. a couple of years ago um, and he's targeted this race seemingly um, yeah James are you a fan of Kunko? Uh, I certainly am yeah I think at this stage you've got to say he's got every chance of providing Franco with the first stakes winner um, it's a race that first season sides have had success in, in the past um, I think New Approach um, and Oratorio as well in the last 10 years they've both been successful in this race um, it's just interesting seeing old Frankel's runners come out, and that you know before they ran, we were hearing lots of reports that they're coming in all shapes and sizes, and that you know, the Galileo influence was coming through, and they're all going to be middle distance three year olds. But with the variety of shapes and sizes they've come in, it sort of seems as if he's also thrown a few more precocious types in there than we might necessarily have expected beforehand. None more so than Kunko, who did plenty wrong on debut and still went on to win fairly comfortably. So you'd have to think the step up in trip to seven furlongs is going to suit on pedigree. And, yeah, I see no reason why he shouldn't be a warm favourite for the race. And more widely speaking about Frankel, what do we think of that? Um, the start he's made with his early progeny? Couldn't, done, couldn't have done much better, really. We see two, two winners from three runners. Um, a surprise, do you think? I think from initial reports, they thought, I think I heard and thinking that he might need more time. I think um, the, the surprising, well, slightly surprising element is how many we've seen so early in the season. Um, and how precocious you know two of the three certainly have been so far i mean 
Um, Majoris of Hugo Palmer is the, the only one who's been beaten so far, but you know, again, showed ability and mm -hmm. certainly didn't look backwards by any means. So I think the uh, the makeup of his season's already looking fairly promising, really. Frankel yeah. also had Queen Kindly the other day win um, by five lengths at Catterick. She's out of Lady of the Desert, very good sprinter, who herself was out of the champion two year old Philly Queen's Logic. So it's all looking remarkably good. And yeah, I agree. I think this has to be considered a bonus almost for Frankel, doesn't it? At the beginning of the season, we weren't expecting this. I think I was sort of expecting by the end of the season a tally of around a tally of winners in the mid teens, perhaps, you know, probably from summer onwards. So I'm probably going to have to revise upwards how many um, two year old winners I think Frankel will get by the end of the season. I'd have to say now probably higher up in the teens, possibly even 20. Um, Chris, how That's many, what I was thinking, actually. How, 20, many, how, how many Frankel 20, two year old winners? 20 individual winners probably win about 30 races. Yeah. Them, I think. James, numbers? I'll be a bit more optimistic and say that. I mean, you've he, started the season as the um, favourite to be champion first season, sire. That mm -hmm. sort of pushed out fairly quickly on the back of a few others showing their hand. And, you know, I think he could have 25 winners possibly. Yeah. Um, you know, given the, the, as we say, that we sort of all expected him to have back end two year olds that were going to be more, you know, later types. That's obviously not the case. Who knows how many he's got sort of waiting in the wings that are going to come and start running in the next couple of weeks. So, yeah, I'm gonna, I think he could have easily have 25 winners this season. And what will his best result be? Do you reckon he'll have a Group 3 winner at least by the end of the season? I see, I see, uh, I see no, re no reason why he couldn't supply something like a Racing Post Trophy winner later in the year. Group 1. So Group yeah. 1 winner. So yeah. um, lots of optimism behind Frankel's first crop of two-year-olds before Royal Ascot next week. Uh, we hope you enjoy the meeting. Thanks for downloading the Racing Postcast. Listen online and on mobile.